My name is Gustavo Eresi. I'm a pulmonologist at the Cleveland Clinic, where I am the section head for pulmonary vascular disease. And we are a large pulmonary hypertension referral center, so we have a, a large population of patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH, uh, on PAH-targeted therapies. pulmonary arterial hypertension is a cardiopulmonary disease. So it starts in the lungs with pulmonary vascular uh, obstruction and remodeling, but that imposes a strain on the heart, specifically the right side of the heart, so they have right heart failure. So they're really limited both from the pulmonary perspective, but also from the heart perspective. The COVID pandemic certainly uh, disrupted the care of our patients in, in many, many ways. Before the pandemic, uh, our organization was already looking into ways of maximizing the use of virtual uh, platforms uh, to care for our patients. But the pandemic, of course, accelerated that trend. Our PAH patients were getting COVID at a similar rates that uh, the general population. Uh, but also, more importantly, they did have increased rates of hospitalization and increased rates of uh, mortality from COVID. Uh, but perhaps the, the biggest impact uh, on our PAH population was the fact that by virtue of their cardiopulmonary limitations, they were uh, patients at high risk uh, of getting severe COVID complications. And so, Many patients were not able to come uh, for the proper care, uh, follow-up, and monitoring. And also, many patients were not diagnosed in a, a timely uh, manner. And so now that uh, things are coming back online, we are seeing several patients where, unfortunately, delays in care or delays in diagnosis uh, were associated with them presenting at a later stage and with more severe symptoms. And one of the things that the pandemic has brought and is here to stay is the reliance on uh, virtual platforms and uh, monitoring. I think that uh, at least our organization, as well as many others uh, across the country, across the globe, have found that using virtual platforms to monitor patients can be very useful. Uh, it can allow us to uh, meet patients where they are from their comfort of their homes, and uh, we can have meaningful conversations about their care and how to uh, improve their situation. And, and I think you are going to be uh, seeing more and more uh, about tools such as actigraphy, for example, uh, that allow us to monitor patients uh, efforts, daily efforts, daily activities uh, on a continuous basis for prolonged periods of time that may give us uh, even deeper insights into how their heart and lung function is um, doing, as opposed to even having patients come during snapshots of time, right? When they come to see a pH provider every three or six months, we get testing and we do an examination that provides us a picture during that particular period of time, but perhaps not telling us the whole story as to how people are doing. The precautions regarding uh, COVID are actually similar to the ones um, that apply to the general population, only uh, to a sort of more stringent degree, I suppose, given the fact that, again, uh, data now and experience show that patients with PAH are at increased risk of severe COVID complications. We certainly recommend uh, vaccination uh, and a fully vaccinated person, of course, is one that has received three doses of an mRNA vaccine. And if you are older than 50 or if you have significant comorbidities, and that obviously applies to all of our PAH patients, uh, a fully vaccinated person actually would uh, be somebody that has received four doses of an mRNA-based vaccine. So I think that, first and foremost, is uh, the most important uh, step. 
far as treatment goes, uh, the oral antivirals, one needs to be mindful of the interactions with pH targeted therapies, particularly with Paxlovid. So many patients are not able to take that if they are on pH targeted therapies. So that's another point to remember as, as we move to a phase where we treat this disease with effective therapies. I think that uh, COVID uh, increased that uh, difficulty uh, by uh, virtue of, you know, the fact that patients needed to isolate, they stay at home, uh, and you know, not being able to access care. Uh, so I think that clearly led to to further delays in diagnosis. I think the pandemic uh, has uh, put a barrier uh, into that diagnostic link, which was already uh, challenging. But I think that uh, now with uh, hopefully the, the pandemic being a bit more controlled with more widespread vaccination, we can go back to you know, an increased level of awareness of this deadly disease that uh, luckily now has fairly effective uh, medical therapy uh, available.